let's take a look at a problem to prove that this little red sports car is speeding. So we have cop one right here and this sports car passes by at, and he's going 55 miles an hour. So cop one says, okay, he checks. Good to go. And then three minutes later, cop two, or, or yeah, three minutes later, cop two radars him and he's going 50 miles an hour. So, so cop two says, okay, good, you check out. But then they radio, radio, radio each other and say, hey, wait a minute, that guy definitely was speeding because I radared him at let's say time the time was zero minutes so in other words it's like you started your stopwatch right when he radared him started at zero and then the clock ticked all the way till when this cop radared him and that was time equals three minutes right three minutes later and since since we're already given hours 55 miles per hour I want to convert this three minutes to hours because I don't want to mix the units, minutes and hours. So I'm going to erase that and just convert three minutes to hours just so we're, we got nice units that all line up. So let's do that. So three minutes, oops, minutes times one hour divided by 60 minutes. And the minutes cancel and you're left with 3 divided by 60 hours which is equal to you know 3 divided by 60 hours which is equal to 1 20th of an hour okay so 3 minutes is really 1 20th of an hour so let's let's use that from now on so this is 1 time is equal to 1 20th of an hour when he passes by. Okay, so now we're going to prove that he was speeding. And just just as a, a little side note, for those of you who like to speed and or dislike cops for radaring and, and catching you speeding, um, I, I encourage you to rethink that, that idea because I spent uh, three months or so in, in Ghana and before I went I learned that the number one cause of tourist deaths is from uh, automobile accidents. And in fact, right when I arrived, there was a funeral for a little girl who got hit by a car, and I actually saw somebody while I was there on a motorcycle get, get hit by a taxi at uh, a really high speed. And I just, any time I was on the road, it was, it was terrifying. There's no rules or regulations. And I would have done anything to, to see a police officer radaring and pulling people over and, and regulating uh, the speed and, and the driving conditions uh, just to make things safer because it really was terrifying. So, you know, it, it does really, it, it stinks to get a ticket. I don't like getting a ticket. But, you know, it, it's worth it because our, our roads are safer because of it. Anyways, okay, that's just a little side tangent and uh, and maybe you can rethink your own ideas but I'll leave that up to you okay so let's prove that this little car was speeding and we're gonna do that by creating a position function and we haven't talked too much about position functions but basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a function where if you pl if you give me the time I can tell you exactly where he is so here if you give me the time is equal to zero so let me show you. If you said time is the time is equal to zero, then I'm going to say, okay, well he's zero miles from the starting point, right? Here's the start, or I guess where I drawn this arrow is the start. But he's zero miles away from the starting point. And then if you say, okay, what I'll, I'm going to give you three minutes, or in other words, one twentieth of an hour. And then I can say, okay, well now he's six miles away from the starting point. So that would be down here, just like we said. So that's all the position function is. It's it's give me a, a time, and I'll tell you how far from the from the start he is. 
Okay, and, and the derivative of position, so this is something, like I said, we haven't talked that much about, but the derivative of position is equal to velocity. And let's understand why. Because if you have a position function, just like we talked about, you have the position is miles, right? The f of, of t values, or the s of t values, are miles. And the t values are time. And it, the derivative is slope, right? So slope is y to, it's the change in y over the change in x. And that is miles, oops, I'm running out of real estate here, but change in y over change in x for position versus time is just miles per hour, which of course we know is, is velocity. That's how fast he's going. So, so the derivative of position is velocity, and, and hopefully that makes sense to you. So let's, keeping that in mind, let's run with this idea of this position function. And now let's, let's find out what his average velocity is, meaning he started with some, some velocity, or he started uh, at some time. Time was zero and his miles were zero. And he ended up, three minutes later, he ended up six miles away. So this would be six miles. This would be three, three or one twentieth of an hour, right? So let's find the slope of, of the, this line between his start and his end, because that will be his average velocity. The slope of that line is miles per hour, and, and the slope of the secant line is the average average slope or the average velocity. Okay, so let's let's do that. So if we plug in or or to find the slope of a secant line it's just y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is s of 120. y1 is s of 0. t2 is just 1 over 20. Right? This is just miles and this is in hours. So minus 0 uh minus t1 is 0, so this is hours and this is miles. And now we can do those calculations. So just switching colors, but just to continue, s of 120 is 6 miles minus 0 miles. And then you're left with 1 over 20 hours minus 0 hours. And this is equal to 6 times 120. And you're, this is still miles per hour. Right, let me let me show you it a, a different way. Um, this is equal to six miles times uh, well it's it's divided by hours, so it's six miles per hour times the 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 constant is one over twenty, but if you divide by one over twenty, you're multiplying by twenty over one. So it's really like 6 miles times 20 over 1 hours. Which, of course, I, I think I've belabored the point in, now. But let me just show you. Six, this, this simplifies to 120 miles per hour. So I apologize for, for wasting your time. But 6 divided by 120 is 120, and the units are miles per hour. So his average velocity in that interval... Or, or in that time frame was 120 miles per hour, which makes sense because he traveled six miles in three minutes. And if you're going one mile per minute, you're going 60 miles an hour, but six miles in three minutes means he went two miles per minute, so he was going 120 miles per hour. That was his average velocity. And we know from the mean value theorem that there is some point, f prime of c, or I guess it would be s prime of c, so let me let me just write even that here. S prime of C, his velocity at some point is equal to the his average velocity. So we know that his exact velocity at a certain point was 120 miles per hour. So we just proved using calculus that this guy was speeding, even though when he got radared he was going 55 and and 50. So it seems like he's slowing down, but it, but we just proved that he was going at least at one point 120 miles an hour. Okay, see you in the next video.